Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm glad that you're here for this um, this presentation um, from the day for on this day of edification for the Lower Susquehanna Synod. My name is Kristen Albert, and I'm your presenter for this um, this session the, today. And I'm from the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. I'm a lay person at Good Shepherd, and I happen to be the facilitator of our racial justice uh, task force small group. So um, today we're going to spend first about a half an hour um, sharing with a little bit with you about how our team went about setting up um, our racial justice task force and our small group um, and some things that you might want to consider if you're con if you are looking to start your own racial justice task force in your congregation. So I'm calling this Towards Racial Justice, Where Does Our Congregation Begin? So let me give you an overview of what I'll cover in our time together. Um, we are going to um, look at the grounding of all of this in our baptismal covenant. Um, talk about who do we begin with? How do we get started? And where is God in all of this work? And then some guiding questions and some, some pillars and basic principles, and then some reminders for you. So I hope this will round out and give you a, a really good sense of um, multiple facets of the process. At the end of our time together, you will have a chance to meet uh, live several of our members of our racial justice task force, our small group, and you'll have a chance to ask them anything that you want to know, um, anything, any questions about the presentation, I'll be there to answer those questions as well, but also to hear from the folks that have been part of this process, um, because we've been through some interesting experiences, building relationships, learning, and so on, and I think it'll be really valuable for you to hear their voices uh, today as well as mine. So I'll keep my presentation here to about 30 minutes and then we'll get a chance to, you'll get a chance to hear from the others in the group. So before we begin, I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that the words of this presentation fall on the soil of our hearts. Come into our brokenness and our lives with your love that heals all. Consume our pride and replace it with humility and vulnerability. Allow us to make space for your correction and redemption. Allow us to bow down with humble hearts, hearts of repentance. Bind us together in true unity and restoration. May we hear your voice within the words of this time together. Give us collective eyes to see our role in repairing what has been broken. Allow these experiences to be a conduit for personal transformation and lead us to new ways of being for racial justice in your world. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So early in 2020, um, Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd started small groups or started talking about piloting some small groups. And we were asked to think about what small group um, we might want to facilitate. And so I uh, volunteered to facilitate our racial justice small group. Now, I am no expert in the field of racial justice, racial equity, um, not, not an expert in the least. Over the past, the two years prior to that, um, I had started doing my own personal work um, to unpack my white privilege and to understand my white privilege and my implicit bias 
And so I had been doing a lot of reading, um, taking some workshops along the way. But ultimately, that call to start a racial justice small group, um, I am just a disciple who is seeking to live out my baptismal covenant. And, you know, in our in our baptism um, are these words that we we uh, affirm that we serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And it's those words that that really have guided me in saying what it, what is it that I am called to be and do? And so this field of racial justice is where I have um, found myself landing. So in those two years that I had been doing this own personal unpacking, um, I realized that learning is really the key, being willing to humble yourself um, to learn things that you don't know that you don't know about racism, racial injustice, racial inequity, um, because there is so much. If you've not taken the time to unpack that for yourself, you probably don't really know what you don't know. And there's a lot of us who seek to live um, and strive for justice and peace in all the earth and follow the example of Jesus. But when it comes to um, racial equity and racial justice, we only know what we know from our side of it as a white European, a white American of European descent. I mean, I really only knew my perceptions. And so I knew that learning um, is something I needed to do first. And I realized also that I mustn't do that learning on the backs of people of color of our black and brown siblings, because they are already, they deal with the issues of racism and inequity every single day. And so um, I needed to spend this time doing my own, I'll call it my own me search um, in terms of, of striving to live out um, my baptismal promise. And so um, from there, we just looked at beginning with the willing, put out a call um, to the congregation saying, is there anyone in the congregation who cares about racial justice and equity and wants to join a small group? Um, we set for that first fall, and this started in August of 2020, um, our first step was to spend time in learning together. One of the things I just want to point out and remind you is that this whole process is not going to be perfect. There is no perfection in this. Um, and don't let your quest to, to figure out what is exactly the right thing to do to rob you of progress. Okay. Um, that humility of being learners together and growing together. So last fall, as I said, we spent that time in learning and we spent um, time with this book, The Color of Compromise by Jamar Tisby. This book actually has a 12 video series on Amazon Prime. So you can watch the video series or you could read the book but it went through the church's complicity in racism since colonial times. And we spent time studying that together week after week and unpacking that together. The other thing that we did is that everybody on the team uh, participated in a program that was a personal journey to unpack uh, power, privilege, and leadership. So I'll share that with you in a, in a bit. But so we spent that time in the fall learning and really holding back the urge to jump in and do something. You know, we 
that's human nature. You know, we want to do, we want to take action. We're compelled to take action. And one of the questions is, what do we even do? But we couldn't even decide what to do until we took that time in learning. So that really, I really urge you to make that your first step is to take time to build relationships as a group and to learn together and to resist um, the compulsion to jump in and start doing before you've really taken the time to understand what you don't know, what you don't know when it comes to racism. So we spent that August through December um, in that learning, and then we reconvened in January, and we spent some time in strategic conversations trying to discern um, what direction we wanted to go. And as it turned out, the group broke down into two different groups. And the folks that you see here on the screen, we actually had two additional people or three additional people that aren't on the screen. Um, and two of those folks have since gone on to do this work in their own congregations. And we lost a third one to illness. Uh, but this is the group of folks that decided to keep going on and continue this work together. So we decided again that we were going to spend time um, figuring out what directions we wanted to take. And we're still working on that, but it's becoming clearer. We have uh, several members of this group who are uh, working on legislation uh, and talking about how to, how to bring people together to take action on legislation um, in policing um, and policy that are systemic issues of racism in our society. And the other group is uh, trying to discern how we can help other congregations to get started doing this work. So recognizing and filling, identifying what the gaps are. So, you know, the Lower Susquehanna Synod has a racial justice task force, the Towards Racial Justice Task Force. And so we're asking the task force, what are the needs of the synod and how can our small group help to fulfill some of those needs and partner with the Towards Racial Justice Task Force. So again, we're still working on that, but it is becoming clearer um, as we move on. But begin with the willing. Begin with the ones who are saying, yes, I want to be part of this. The other piece of this is making sure that along the way you remain connected with the Holy Spirit. Human beings have this magnificent brain that we've been blessed with. And I don't know about you, but we tend to go into, uh, the. I'll use myself for an example, the gospel according to Chris. Here's what Chris thinks. Here's what the team thinks. Here's what we should do. And we forget to remain connected and invoke the Holy Spirit in the process. So our team used this book by Latasha Morrison. And by the way, these are all uh, at the end of the program. I have these resources listed and you may want to take a screenshot um, with your phone. But this book is, uh, Latasha was the developer of Be the Bridge, or Be the Bridge to Racial Unity. Um, if you go online to be the bridge.org, um, you'll see the whole national Be the Bridge organization. But Latasha wrote a book, and the subtitle of the book is Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't just intellectualizing this process but that we were invoking the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if you can see all my, my tabs and markers here. The blue tabs are liturgies that she has already written in here. And the, the, the orange tags are prayers. And so we use the liturgies and the prayers um, to ground ourselves in the Holy Spirit as we gathered for each of our presentation or each of our um, meetings. Um, so some 
pillars of change, some things to really be thinking about as you begin your work. Uh, let's say you're beginning, you're getting ready to assemble your group or you have assembled your group. And there are four really important pieces to this that I, I want you to um, consider. And one is your purpose. Think together about racism, what your role is, and how you want to help bring about change. Each congregation has its unique niche, its unique gifts, its unique ways of contributing, uh, and the individuals each have unique gifts. So really discerning for your folks what will be your role in this and how do you want to bring about change. Now, if you've spent time doing the learning and the unpacking, that's going to help to inform how you go about doing this, because you're going to realize that it's not just enough. It isn't, you don't want to just go into um, a community and be a, what's called a white savior, right? That's not what we're here to do. You know, how are we being called to partner um, and how are we being called to serve and how are we being called to stand up? for racial and social justice. So think about racism, your role, and how you want to help bring about change. The second bullet to the right is self-examination. If you are a white person of European descent, you cannot ignore your privilege and implicit bias. And again, I, I keep coming back to this, you have to spend the time to learn about white privilege and to understand your implicit bias and be able to see your work humbly through this lens. Because when you, you need to be able to catch yourself and catch each other in ways that we, microaggressions they're called. We need to be able to catch ourselves um, engaging in microaggressions that we didn't even know we were doing, okay? We have to educate ourselves about those things, but we cannot ignore our privilege and our implicit bias. So self-examination and reflection all along the way is absolutely critical. Also, another critical piece is knowing the history and the systems. And Ibram Kendi says it, says it this way. He says, to know the past is to know the present, okay? So if you don't know your history, the history of racism in America, the history of racism in Christianity, in the, in the church uh, in North America, it's really important that you learn that history and you understand those systems. Again, to just go out and try to do something without learning first is a real dangerous place to be. And a last um, fourth piece that I'll raise up is this issue of making sure you're creating authentic relationships with people of color. Um, a lot of folks ask, well, how, how do we do this? Well, this takes time. Relationships with anybody, authentic relationships take time and uh, take cultivation. So, Again, you have to look at how you're working to decenter, decenter your whiteness and center black lives. So, for example, you might um, you might find coming up in June that there is a Juneteenth program um, that is happening in your community. Go celebrate, be with. Uh, your black and brown friends as they celebrate Juneteenth or um, I don't know if celebrate is the right word, but as they observe Juneteenth, um, go to a black business expo or black business expos, have conversations, support black owned businesses, check out lists of black owned businesses and and seek to hire them. How are you working to dissent, de-center whiteness and center black 
lives. So I talked about um, a little bit a couple minutes ago about what our small group is doing. And as I said, um, one of the one of the groups is is focusing on legislation, but the other group is uh, trying to decide how to partner um, with the Lower Susquehanna Towards Racial Justice Task Force. And some of the things that we've heard is that need to help other churches start their own congregational team. So our team is actually thinking about how we can help you <laughs> to start your teams. So if that is a need, we would love to hear from you. Um, we've thought about providing resources, um, building on this presentation, a toolkit of how to put a team together. What are healthy best practices? Conversations about why, why is racial justice and racial equity a church issue? What is our faith call? to race and diversity? Where is Jesus in all of it? And we might we might put together um, book studies. Uh, I know coming up in May, and I don't have my book handy, um, but there will be a book study that you'll be able to participate in. That book study is Who Will Be a Witness? by Drew Hart. So keep your eyes open for that. Igniting activism for God's justice, love, and deliverance. Um, but our small group might decide to offer other book studies, um, might start a blog, who knows, but we want to make sure that we are serving um, the synod and figuring out how we can best serve others to create these spaces to for racial justice and equity. Um, we want to also be creative and aware of what community other what the community is already doing and how we can partner with the community. Um, so we've got lots of things that we are considering as we go through this. So just some reminders for you. Um, that maybe I've spoken to and maybe I haven't at this point. But first of all, this isn't an intellectual journey. I've heard it said that white people read books, okay? And I put that in quotes down there, if you can see me in the corner. White people read books. We do a lot of reading, but we don't do a lot of doing. And that sounds almost like I'm saying that we shouldn't do the reading, and that's not what I mean. Um, we do, we must do the learning, but it is not purely an intellectual journey. It's also paying attention to your emotions, your language, and your body in the whole process. Um, this journey must be done with humility. The journey of recognizing that every step we take in this journey, we do with God's help and we do the best we can with what we know. So journey with humility, never just saying we know it all. Follow us. We've got it all figured out because we sure don't. None of us do. The third one down here is you will make mistakes. And if I had time here, I would share with you the mistakes that I've made toward uh, my black and brown brothers and sisters. And I am very grateful that I have uh, black and brown folks who have pointed out to me where I have caused offense and have helped me to um, give me that space to rethink. You will make mistakes. You cannot enter into this um, process without being aware that you will be that you will make mistakes. But you can't let that fear paralyze you. Again, um, you will make mistakes. Just pray often about it. Um, I think Stephen Covey wrote a book, "The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People." This next one is one of his. Seek first to understand, 
than to be understood. Okay. And that goes along with the humility. Um, listen, rather than be the one who's always doing the talking. The next one, never stop learning. When it comes to racial justice and equity, you will never, ever know it all. And last reminder is that you will never be able to separate yourself from your whiteness. I am white and I live in a white centric world. And up until the time that I started working on understanding and unpacking my own white privilege, I didn't realize that I didn't even think of myself as a race. Everybody else who was different were race, were, were, a, were a different race. I didn't even see myself as being the white race. I just saw myself as the norm and against those who were compared to those who were different than me. You will never be able to separate yourself from your whiteness. And because of that, you will never fully be able to step into the shoes of a person of color and totally understand. Um, and so just always be aware that there might be things that you're not seeing when it comes to racial justice and equity, that you need to step back and recognize your whiteness in it. So as I come to my last uh, three minutes here, you might wanna take screenshots of these. These are some books and videos. Uh, my Grandmother's Hands by Resma Menachem. That is a great book that brings into context the whole body and emotion portion of this whole racial identity. So what it means to be a white body um, and what it means to be a black body. And they also refer to, he also refers to police bodies. It's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. Um, online, on YouTube, and also a book, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. Um, our small group right now is watching his videos at the beginning of each of our sessions um, from YouTube and learning from his uncomfortable conversations. As I said, The Color of Compromise by Jamar Tisby. This is the book that we use to walk us through the churches, uh, the American church's complicity with racism. And the other book that I referred to was Latasha Morrison's Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation. There's some great podcasts out there. If you're if you like to listen to podcasts, Code Switch and White Lies are both on NPR. 1619 is on the New York Times and Seen on Radio. If you go to seenonradio.org, these are great podcasts for learning and challenging your thinking when it comes to racial justice and racial equity. And um, as I said in the beginning, I truly believe that it is up to us as those of us who are white and European American of European American descent that we need to spend this time learning. And I'm okay with being a broken record about this. But I've developed a program called the Intro to Power, Privilege and Leadership. It's in the form of a seven day challenge that you can take over the course of 21 or 28 days, but it is a personal step-by-step -step, uh, online program designed to help you to do the reflection and to present you with um, learning opportunities to discover what it is that you don't know that you don't know about racism um, and racial equity. Um, I also have online if you would like to participate in a facilitated small group, uh, The Color of Compromise, which is what our, our team did at the beginning of August last year. Um, and I'm happy to give you the um, access to The Color of Compromise, uh, small, facilitated small group. And then there are some free resources. Five free anti-racism courses are here listed. And Whites for Racial Equity, also some free online courses. As Maya Angelou said, you do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, 
do better. So I want to invite you to connect with us. If you um, would like to connect with us, here is my email address. And I'm going to stop. I can't believe it. 30 seconds or 30 minutes exactly. Um, I invite you to connect with me and I can connect you with our group. And um, we're happy to support you and your congregation as you seek to create a racial justice tax force or small group in your congregation. So thank you for being here. I'm going to I'm going to turn off the recording now and we're going to be joined by our racial justice small group by some members from our small group and we'll open it for questions. So we'll see you in just a moment.